As Christians, we hear so much about walking in the Spirit of God and loving one another. But how often has your emotions, your feelings about someone or situation either gotten away or had you acting in a way that, say, less than wonderful? Today's topic's a big one. We're going to talk about how to be emotionally fit. This can help you and those you love manage your emotions way more maturely so you can walk in the Spirit of God. Welcome to today's topic of emotional fitness. This is such a big topic for believers all around the world. And yet I have never heard a real teaching on how to mature emotionally, how to identify your feelings, how to communicate them properly, or even how to switch a feeling. Can you imagine the ability to switch a feeling? You're feeling really angry and you can go to calm. Well, all these are the topics in the Emotional Fitness book that we're offering today. Now, first, I want to talk about what does it really mean to be emotionally fit? That's not a term I grew up with. It's not a term you grew up with. None of us learned that term in high school. There was no class on emotional fitness. We didn't go to the emotional gym and work out. If you are spiritually fit, you know what that requires. You are praying regularly. You're worshiping regularly. You're serving somewhere. You're reading and, and, and incorporating the Word of God in your life. And of course, you're being part of a local church. Those disciplines bring you spiritual fitness. If you're physically fit, you're probably eating smart and not doing donuts and silly stuff like that. You're doing some kind of cardio, whether it's walking, running, swimming, something. Or you're doing some kind of weight resistance and stretching or one of those classes, you know, that gets you all sweaty. And hopefully you're getting enough sleep. But if you're doing those disciplines, you're called physically fit. Now, if you're financially fit, you have some disciplines too. You're earning resources in some way, creating wealth. You're tithing, of course, because without tithing, you're going to have God not really working with you. So you want to tithe for sure. Saving money, of course, and investing it and living below your means. Those disciplines will make you financially fit, and maybe even wealthy. Now, when you look at these types of fitnesses, you can extrapolate a couple things. Fitness is a result. It's not a gift. We all have an equal playing field in a free society to be physically fit or not. Financially fit or not. Emotionally fit or not. We're not born genetically emotionally out of control. We can learn how to be emotionally fit. Fitness takes regular and known disciplines. That's point number two. Because without these disciplines, you don't get results. And so many believers think this is getting saved is some kind of magic thing and everything that requires discipline is going to magically come into your life as a blessing. You got to work for many of the disciplines that guarantee blessings and outcomes, okay? Now, you have to keep these disciplines. Number three, you have to keep these disciplines to keep your results. For example, you know, I've done bodybuilding. I got all the way down to like, you know, 10% body fat, and then I let it go. And I, my, let's just say my percentage went up because my disciplines changed, okay? There's been periods in, in people's lives where they've been wealthy, but they've spent it instead of saving and investing it, and they ended up being broke, okay? You have to maintain disciplines to have the results. Now, almost anyone can have these results if they embrace the disciplines. And I don't really hear enough in the Church of Christ about discipline. I remember when I was a believer, I read a, a great book called, uh, on discipline, and it really changed my life, and it really helped me to understand that the Christian life is a disciplined life. And we don't hear that. We're eating what we want, doing what we want, watching whatever we want on TV, 
okay? And we need to embrace disciplines in these various areas of our life if we're going to have the fitness. Now, if you're not having physical fitness or financial fitness or spiritual fitness or emotional fitness, this is not God withholding his blessing from you. He's not withholding something from you. This is his children withholding results from themselves. Now, the great thing about that is if I am the problem, I am the solution. And we're going to talk about that as we talk about emotional fitness. God has never forsaken the principle of the seed. If you plant an apple, you're probably going to get an apple tree. If you plant a pear seed, you're going to get a pear tree. Yet so many Christians want the results of a mature, disciplined life Without the discipline. <laughs> you know, when I go to the gym, the, the uh, men and women who have six-pack abs, they've earned them, okay? It was not genetics. They eat well and they exercise well. The discipline is a seed and it guarantees results. For example, if you stretch regularly, especially at my age, you know, I'm, I'm 60. If I stretch regularly, this discipline gives me greater flexibility and, and it really in a very short matter of time. If you practice a musical instrument at any age, you'll be able to be called a musician and be able to play and entertain and have fun with that. Now, if I never practice an instrument, I should not expect to be hired as a musician, no matter how saved I am. Okay, now let that sink into you, all right? Disciplines, we all have some and some have a discipline of poverty. They actually have a discipline of poverty. They live above their means. They don't save any money. They don't invest anything, okay? And these disciplines lead to poverty. Some have the discipline of obesity. They consume way more calories than they need. They eat late. They don't exercise. They really get unhealthy, and this can lead to lots of diseases. And it's not God's will, but it's a result of disciplines. See, disciplines work both ways. And when we get into this today, I'll offer you a small 10-minute-a-day discipline that can change your life and help bring more intimacy with your spouse if you're married. So stay with us. I strongly encourage you to get the book Emotional Fitness. It has helped thousands and thousands of people learn how to identify, communicate, and switch their feelings, not to be run by their emotions, but to be able to be mature, to be able to feel what they're feeling and even be able to switch what they're feeling so they can do their life better and have really positive results instead of those negative results from not managing their feelings. So I encourage you, get this, help yourself, start a group and help others to be emotionally mature in the body of Christ. That would be fantastic. To order your emotional fitness book, call 800-568-9488 or go online at HealingTimeMinistries.com. Emotional wellness is your personal responsibility. However, very few people know how to properly identify, communicate, or master their emotions. In this book, you will learn how to capture your emotions and use them to create the life you desire. Once you reach emotional fitness, the world is yours to conquer. Order your emotional fitness book today. Welcome back to this amazing topic of emotional fitness. As Christians, the more emotionally fit we are, the better we can walk in the Spirit of God, the better we can love God with all our heart, soul, and mind like the first commandment commissions us to do. If we are better emotionally, being emotionally fit, we can actually love our neighbors as ourselves, Even if they think differently than you do, even if they vote differently than you do, we can be emotionally fit. We can actually practice the emotions of love, graciousness, kindness, in those situations that we find very challenging. Wouldn't you like to be in a situation where you could just decide to be loving? Now, if you're a parent, you've probably had to make that choice sometimes because your kids, they challenge you, right? If you're married, you've had to make those decisions. Wouldn't it be fun to be able to decide to love anyone, anytime? 
when we are emotionally fit, we are more likely to do what the scripture says and let our words be seasoned with grace. In Colossians 4, 6, it says, let your speech always be seasoned with grace, with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a sneaking suspicion that like myself, you've had a few less than proud moments where you said some things that later you deeply regret it. This wasn't just because you were spiritually immature. It's often because you're not emotionally fit. You see, your spiritual disciplines guarantee you spiritual maturity. But where are our emotional disciplines? When you're not emotionally fit, it goes like this in real time, in a real relationship, even if you deeply love the other person. This could be your favorite person in the world. This could be your parents. This could be your, your, your spouse, your husband, your wife. This could be your best friend for 20 years. This could be anybody, all right? You begin to have a feeling that you can't identify. Then this feeling keeps getting bigger and bigger inside of you pretty fast. We call that escalation, okay? And it could be, it could be sadness. It could be excitement. It could be anger. It could be frustration, and you can't seem to manage it inside of you, so it's getting bigger. And as it grows, you burp out some kind of puke on the other person, okay? <laughs> and it's like, what? And it's like, almost like an involuntary kind of thing. You, you, you wish you never said it. If you had a clear moment, you would have never even thought to say that, but your emotions are not fit. You couldn't manage them. Then you get confused as to why you did that. And then, la then you also have regret. I, and I, I've had regret. I've had times when I've had to go back and say, forgive me. Okay, if, now, if you're humble, you do apologize. Okay, but there's still that pain for the other person. Uh, there's still things you said that are stuck in their heart. Okay, now, if you're very prideful and you can't apologize, you let the other person stay in pain unnecessarily. Okay, and if right now, I'm just going to stop for a second and say, if you know there's someone that you hurt with your words. I want you to call them. Just go call them and say you're sorry. Because you don't want those things between you and those you love. You don't need to have it. Okay, it's a whole other topic, a whole other show. But that was because you were emotionally immature. Now, if you are more emotionally fit, even with the same level of spiritual maturity, this situation could go down in a totally different way Okay, go a different path and the results are different for you and for them. So let's go through the same exact scenario. If someone was emotionally mature, this is what would happen as they're starting to have feelings. Okay, number one, they would be able to identify what they're feeling. <laughs> uh, they would be able to say, wow, I'm feeling disrespected right now. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling unheard. Now see how those feeling words are so much more intelligent than I don't know what's going on with me. All I know is I'm getting upset or angry or whatever your big feeling word is, okay? And, and it just seems like a balloon's going up where this person's able to paint the balloon and go, no, this isn't anger. I'm just feeling disrespected or I'm feeling unimportant. Now, secondly, they would be able to manage the internal intensity. They would feel this balloon getting bigger and bigger and bigger but they would be able to manage it so that they don't do anything that they would regret. Number three, they would be able to ask and discover the other person's feelings and gain insight into what's going on inside of them. So a mature emotional person could say, hey, I'm really feeling unheard here. You know, is there something going on with you? Are you feeling something towards me that we need to talk about? And they would actually be able to inquire, not declare, you're mad at me. That's, you, you don't have the power to declare other person's reality. If you're that person, you're constantly making people defensive because you're wrong. Okay? But they'll be able to communicate in such a way to say, hey, what's going on with you? Okay? Uh, and as these feelings begin to get amplified, they would be able to look at their tone of voice, be able to, to manage what's going on. Now five, they would be able to choose their words more carefully and not have to regret their behavior or words. 
and more likely the other person feels heard and respected, even if they still disagree. And sometimes when you're in a situation where it's getting intense and if you're emotionally fit and you realize the other person is not going to go along with you, not going to be mature, you can say, hey, this isn't working for me right now. Why don't we both calm down and then we can have this conversation later. Now, in both these situations, it's the emotional fitness that's the variable, not their faith, not their love of Jesus, not their Christianity. And I believe every believer can benefit from being emotionally fit. The results are tremendous. You can do a group in your home. You can do a group in your church. You can take advantage of these principles in the Emotional Fitness book. Do it together. Do it as a team. And what can happen is your whole little cell group or Sunday school can become incredibly more emotionally fit. And we've seen thousands of people's lives changed by this material because there's nowhere where you get trained to do emotional fitness. Not in high school, not in college. I got four degrees that none of them helped me with that. You have to do it yourself. It's like golf. You have to pick up the club and you have to swing and swing and swing and then you get better at it. No one just picks up a club and plays golf. So I'm going to encourage you, go ahead and take a step into getting the emotional fitness for yourself, for a group, and change everyone's life. Are you emotionally drained? Unable to really feel anything anymore? The Emotional Fitness Book provides the strategies and roadmap to mastering your emotions, creating a more fulfilling life. To order your Emotional Fitness Book, call 800-568-9488 or go online at HealingTimeMinistries.com. I strongly encourage you to get the Emotional Fitness book. This book can help you, not only help yourself, but help people in your group to become emotionally fit, to be able to take the challenges of life and not let your emotions run your decisions and truly walk in the spirit by being able to manage your emotions. Emotional wellness is your personal responsibility. However, very few people know how to properly identify, communicate, or master their emotions. In this book, you will learn how to capture your emotions and use them to create the life you desire. Once you reach emotional fitness, the world is yours to conquer. Order your emotional fitness book today. I want to thank those who pray for us and also who give to Healing Time. We need your financial support to get this message to people in their homes, in their churches, to start groups all around the world. I want you to know I personally give and I do not take a dime from any donation that comes to Healing Time. I want us to change the world together, whether it's abuse, abandonment, or addictions, or whatever it is. We can do this together, so I need your help. So please join me in giving and changing the world and healing the brokenhearted all across the globe. And thank you so much for your donation. Thanks for staying with us. And today, and in this segment, I wanna share with you a very simple exercise that can help you to begin to identify and communicate your feelings. Now, I've used this exercise with really tens of thousands of people in conferences and with my clients uh, for the last 35 years. This exercise, like any other, only works if you do it regularly, okay? You don't get a six-pack by not doing push-ups or ab exercises, and you won't get emotionally fit without having an exercise. Now, I honestly developed this exercise for myself while I was getting a master's degree in counseling. My professors, although they were great godly people, would talk about feelings and the importance of feelings, but they never actually gave me any tools to learn how to identify or communicate those feelings. Now, we're created in the image of God, and God actually has feelings as well. You can see this in His Word through the Scriptures. We can also see Jesus manifesting different feelings through His life and even in His post-resurrection conversations in the book of Revelations. It's human to have feelings and divine if we can manage them well. Now, I'm going to share this feelings exercise with you, but I know most of us have such an emotionally limited vocabulary. Now, if you go to our webpage and email me for a free feelings list, I will send you about 200 feelings to help you start your journey. Now, this is just the start of your journey towards emotional fitness. For the rest, of course, order the book, start your groups, do those things. That'll really accelerate your emotional fitness. 
Now, I want to get into the exercise because we have a short amount of time. This feelings exercise is simple. Simply place your finger on a, on a feeling word on the sheet that we send you. And whatever it is, whether it's calm, uh, fun, elated, uh, tired, exasperated, overwhelmed, whatever it is, okay? So let's say I pick the word calm. Then there are two sentences that you would write down for calm, and you would literally write these down. I feel calm when, and you would use a, a current example, something like I feel calm. I feel calm when I am at my house, I'm laying in the hammock, and all I can hear is birds, bright blue sky, Colorado cool air. Whew. I don't just get, I go right there, okay? Now, I first remember feeling calm. Uh, actually, me and my sister were on a farm for some reason, and there was like this hill, and we were just looking up, up, up at the sky, and we were making, um, kind of trying to figure out cloud shapes and stuff like that, but it just felt very calm resting on that hill with the cool grass and just being calm. So you want to do the first ones in the present tense sometime in the last few years. The second one, however, is going to be under the age of 18. So you take that word calm and you put it in these two sentences, okay? And try to make them pictures, not general, not general things like, well, when I go for a walk. No, when you went for a walk with your dad. Try to make them photographs from your actual life because that will make them stick. And we're trying to do uh, the, the first time in the present so that we can actually create a database of feelings. So the second one's under the age of 18. Now, I, so when you do the feeling calm thing, that's great. And you can try that at home. Uh, but then you would go to other feelings and you would, you would talk that. And it's super important that you do this feelings like this, use the list for at least 90 days. What we're trying to do in doing the two feelings exercise is create these uh, kind of uh, memory places inside of you so that you know what you're feeling. So that when you're having a conversation or you're in a situation, you can ask yourself, what am I feeling? And your little emotional computer, because you've done this work, can, oh, you feel relaxed. Oh, you feel tense. Oh, you feel uh, anticipation. Oh, you feel insecure. And you can start identifying your internal emotions, which would be fantastic for you and your friends. Now, if you can do this discipline for 90 days, you'll become incredibly more emotionally literate than you are right now. I can guarantee you that. I've seen thousands of people do this exercise. Now, it'll take more than this to become emotionally fit. And a lot of that, those topics are in the book, and I strongly recommend you start a group or do it for yourself or do it as a couple. You'll have a stronger marriage. Now, how emotionally literate you want to be, that's up to you. Now, if you're married or let's suppose you're seriously dating, you know, I don't know what your Facebook status is when you're seriously dating, it changes all the time. But if you have that little symbol on your Facebook and says, we're serious, you might uh, want to do the feelings exercise with this other person and you can become emotionally skilled as well. Now, if you do do that with your, your spouse or the one you're in love with, I want to add some rules to the exercise. Because when you do it by yourself, anything is fine. But when you're doing it inside a marriage or a um, love relationship, you want to have some safety around it so it doesn't become a bashing session. So number one, when you do it with that other person, no examples about the other person at all, even the positive ones. Every example has to be outside that relationship. You would never say, I feel frustrated when you. You can feel frustrated about anything or anyone outside of your marriage or your relationship if you're going to do this exercise together. Number two, maintain eye contact. You know, I'm surprised how many couples don't look each other in the eyes. When you're doing your feelings, look into the eyes of the other person, so important. And number three, no feedback with each other. Do not say, I don't understand, um, tell me more, dig deeper, none of that. Just hear the other person's heart. Now, if you're not married, you can do it by yourself, but I would encourage you to read them out loud or do it with a friend, and even better, do it with a group. Wouldn't it be fun to sit around and say, okay, what's the feeling you had this week? And just hear people talk about their feelings. You'll be amazed at how godly people have all the feelings you do. Being emotionally fit does not have to be a mystery to you anymore, any more than financially fit or spiritual fit. Now, I want you to really consider 
taking a journey. Because anytime when I, I go into like a physical fitness uh, regimen, whether it's a bodybuilding regimen or a cardio regimen or whatever I'm doing, I have to take it as a journey. Now, my spiritual disciplines have been a lifelong journey of reading the word, praying, worshiping Jesus. So I expect my emotional fitness to be a journey. So what I'm going to encourage you is get the emotional fitness and decide on a journey of life where you get to be incredibly emotionally mature and able to identify, share, and switch your feelings whenever you want to so you can walk in the Spirit of God. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please, I invite you into this prayer with me and it can change your eternal life and your current life. Just say, Jesus, forgive me. I want to give you my heart and follow you. And then go to our website and, and click that salvation tab and get the information to start reading the word of God and get in the local church and find your gifts to change this world. I want to thank those who pray for us and also who give to Healing Time. We need your financial support to get this message to people in their homes and their churches to start groups all around the world. I want you to know I personally give and I do not take a dime from any donation that comes to Healing Time. So please join me in giving and changing the world and healing the brokenhearted all across the globe. And thank you so much for your donation. Thank you so much for being with us today. Today's been awesome. You can be emotionally fit. And for those of you who are actually going to go to our website and practice the emotional fitness exercise, the one exercise, there's so much more. Your life is going to be different. It's going to be fun. Now, you can go to our YouTube page too, and you can find the episodes, go to the web page, share this with someone, share this with a lot of people. Because the more people you know in your life that are emotionally fit, the better your life's going to be. I love being around emotionally mature people. Of course, in the counseling center, I'm around counselors, and, and actually my admin team is extremely emotionally mature. And we can have a feeling. It's okay. Wouldn't it be okay to be able to have a feeling, process it, and not have to stuff it or medicate it with addictions or you know pretend it's not happening? You can be that person. And I want to just a shout out to all you who financially support us, who pray with us and walk alongside of us. Healing Time Ministries starting groups all around the world. I want you to be that person. I really do. The body of Christ only heals if one cell takes responsibility and says, I will start that group. I will let people heal in this area. And go to our webpage. There's lots of areas, sexual purity, marriage, um, betrayal, all kinds of things uh, worthy that you can start a group and you can start healing people where you are. You are a healer because you're in Christ and you have the gifts to be able to read, to push buttons and do this. Take on somebody, even one person or five people or 10 people and do any of these groups. Healing time is where you get together in the name of Jesus and you start discipling each other in these topics. It's healing time when you decide to have your healing time.